Okay, so I am Kristen Crosby, and I am the Director of International Admission at Ohio Wesleyan University. I'm excited to offer another one of my Tuesday topics. This one is called Experience Math. And it's all about research and internships at Ohio Wesleyan. And one thing that I love to point out um, that sets Ohio Wesleyan apart from a lot of other colleges and universities, maybe most of them, um, we actually require every student to graduate with research and internships, maybe some other opportunities as well, travel learning, study abroad, community service, so whereas other colleges and universities say they offer internships and they offer research, we can say that we guarantee them for every single student and we have funding to help make that a reality for students because, you know, it could cost you money to have to travel somewhere or maybe you have to help pay for housing during the summer. So we have grants to help cover those costs. All right, so let's get started. Uh, how do we make this a reality for students? Well, we do it through our curriculum. We call it the OWU Connection. It's all about connecting your learning to real world experiences. It's our signature program and it's the foundational part of our academics. So the OWU Connection, there's a bunch of different components, but what goes into the OWU Connection is that you've got faculty mentors who work with you and you will build your unique pathway of connection experiences. And connection experiences can include internships, research, travel, like study abroad, or maybe you don't want to go to another country, but you want to do a semester long internship in Washington, D.C., We've got Wesleyan in Washington for politics and government, a New York arts program of internships in New York, uh, research in Chicago, a Philadelphia internship program. So a number of things that you can do off campus, either in the US or studying abroad in another country. We also have short-term travel learning classes that happen on campus, but uh, at the end of the semester, you and the class and the professors travel together to go immerse yourself in something you've spent studying all semester long. And it's oftentimes in another country or maybe another part of the United States. It could be field studies, but it really brings your learning to life. Uh, there can be creative projects that you might put together for an OWU connection experience or a community service project. Um, there are lots of ways to satisfy those OWU connection experiences. But the whole key point of the OWU connection is so that you can take the theory that you've learned in the classroom and put it into practice. And the OWU connection is really meant to help you develop skills, knowledge, experience that employers and grad students, uh, grad schools are looking for. It also helps you develop skills that will enable you to think critically, analyze complex problems, work with teams, communicate effectively, and it connects your classroom learning with real world experience. And these connection experiences prepare you for careers, for the causes that you're passionate about, or for graduate school opportunities that you might be dreaming of pursuing. It also helps you explore connections that link your subjects together. Because when you come to study in the United States, you typically don't just study one subject. That's the beauty of studying in the US. You study more than one subject. Eventually you'll have a major, which is like your specialization, but you'll be taking other classes not related to your major. So it's kind of exciting to see how, say, psychology can inform your studies of politics and government, or how even the arts might inform your studies of environmental science. So we want you to explore connections that link arts, sciences, humanities, uh, because all of these links and connections, these interdisciplinary studies 
help you discover how to solve real world challenges. And then the other component that we really strive to um, instill in our students and why we value having international students on our campus is that we want to build a diverse and global perspective on our campus and in our students. So that's a little bit about the OWU connection, our educational philosophy. And again, just wanna point out for anybody who's just joined that Ohio Wesleyan guarantees every student internships and research. So we don't just offer them, we guarantee them. And it's actually a requirement to graduate. Got a video to share that goes into a little bit of information on the OWU Connection. We recently had a big conference we call the OWU Connection Conference, where students come together and talk about their connection experiences. So um, quick video, but I will um, play this now and I'll also share this link later. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second annual OWU Connection Conference. My name is Matt Vandenberg. I'm so honored to be your president. I'm excited to be here because you have the OWU Connection. And the OWU Connection guarantees you an out-of-classroom experience that is going to change your life. And today's OWU Connection Conference is the proof. I studied pharmacology and anatomy in Wollongong, Australia. I worked at the Mayo Clinic this summer for 10 weeks. My OU Connection experience was interning with NYSORS as an accounts payable intern. While I was in New York, I interned at Ball Magazine, which is a art magazine on stationed in Brooklyn. I was looking at the different movement strategies that males and female lizards use. I was involved with Bit OU. We wanted to see if we can build a new transistor without using silicon, but instead using a 2D material like tungsten disulfide. I studied abroad fall 2022 in Prague, Czech Republic. It was one of the most enriching experiences in my entire life. The experiences they have and the ways they can help you, you can figure out if you really enjoy what you're doing or if you want to take on a different path. I developed a software which would allow virtual industries to update a lot of devices at once. I got to work with an advanced group. So these are people from age 30 to about 60 years old. Uh, we got to take them through different strength phases, hypertrophy. We get to work in a lab with professors and people who know everything about their field. I learned a lot about cross-cultural thinking because all my professors were from four different countries, none of whom are Czech. I took a lot of inspiration from artists all over within fashion, drawing, art in general. I actually met a lot of cool people through the experience and learned that that may be the path I'll take down. And it's really cool to have an experience this young, facilitated by Ohio Wesleyan. And I'm really excited to have the opportunity. Going to Mayo made me realize, like, and be so thankful for the experiences that I've had here. It is so nice having such supportive faculty here. OU Connection has done so much for me, not only my intern there, I've done some on the Cuyahoga, I've been in study abroad, but they really accommodate to what you're looking for. You know, if you need a little bit of help figuring out what it is you want to do with your life, what you want your impact to be in this world, well, I think that Ohio Wesleyan University is the best place for you to go to college in the United States of America. Okay, let me just get to the next slide. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. So that was our Connection Conference. And it's really exciting to see students take the lead and give presentations on the research that they've done or the internships they've had. Because you, at this point, might be thinking, I don't know what I want to do for research. I have no idea where I want to go and do an internship, but the Connection Conference will help inspire you. Plus, we have a whole team of advisors who work in the OU Connection office who will help you put together a research proposal, get funding for your expenses, 
a whole team of advisors who will help you find internships that will relate to your career. So if you're not sure yet what you'd want to do, not to worry. You will have so many people along the way helping you figure out all of the ways you can take advantage of connection experiences. So each year we award lots of money to students to provide career development opportunities. Um, last year we awarded over $125,000 just for uh, these research and internship opportunities. That doesn't include scholarships we offer for admission or scholarships for study abroad. Uh, this money is geared towards making the internships and research a reality for everybody. So I'm gonna go through some myths and um, sort of dispel some myths that, that students might have about doing internships or research in the US. Uh, I think the first myth is that when students think about small colleges and universities, um, they think, well, maybe there aren't gonna be as many opportunities for me there. If it's so small, what could they really offer? Uh, but that's definitely not the case. In fact, small universities might actually offer more opportunities because there are few, fewer students to compete with for those opportunities. Um, it's easier to get to know people like your professors, career services advisors, so easier to figure out who to turn to to ask about these opportunities. Um, at a small university like Ohio Wesleyan, there are no grad students to compete for these resources. So this picture here is actually um, a picture of our telescope that we have. So Professor Harmon is in the middle. He's with some students and they are probably hunting for planets or looking for star spots. Um, but at a place like Ohio Wesleyan, you will have access to state-of-the-art instrumentation um, like this telescope here. So you aren't going to find that those opportunities are reserved for grad students because we don't have grad students at OWU. Um, a great example of how a small university really launched a student's career is Evan, who graduated with a double major in genetics and biochemistry. Some of the connection experiences he took advantage of uh, was our summer science research program. The summer science research program um, provides actually um, not only funding, we pay students to do research on campus, but we give them free housing. So for 10 weeks, he worked with Professor Wolverton and um, he published his findings in the American Journal of Botany. And he also presented his research at a conference, the American Society of Plant Biologists. So another thing that we do at Ohio Wesleyan to develop students professionally is that we encourage them to attend conferences, to present at conferences, to publish their findings. Uh, so he actually went on to get his PhD in genetics at Yale University. And he says of his time at Ohio Wesleyan that without the hands-on research experience and the rigorous coursework that he had at OWU, he wouldn't have accomplished any of that. And one thing I love to point out about Evan is that not only did he get his PhD in genetics from Yale University, he actually won the award for the best dissertation. I think that says a lot about uh, the experience that he got at OWU and how it prepared him to be so successful at Yale. So what is he doing today? He's working in Boston. He's working as a senior genomics research scientist at a pharmaceutical company. He said it was always his dream to uh, design drugs and he is doing that. He is working his dream job in Boston. And all of these examples that I will be sharing in my presentation today are international students. So in case you're wondering, well, is this an American student? No, Evan um, came from China and he is working his dream job in Boston. So a couple other things I wanna say about small universities and colleges versus medium and large ones. Um, there are really a lot of advantages. And 
The great thing is that you're already aware of Ohio Wesleyan. So you have a small college, small university like OWU on your radar. Uh, but I just want to hit home some of the great points about a small university versus medium and large ones. All of your classes at Ohio Wesleyan are small. So you can see here, this is a typical class size. They're discussion oriented. You don't just learn from someone talking at you. Um, you're learning from a professor who is an expert in their field, but you're also hearing from other students. And it's really valuable to be able to have that opportunity to share your experience and opinion and knowledge and learn from your peers as well. At another university, um, medium, large university, this is a typical class. And I should know, I graduated from a medium-sized university in just about every single class of mine. Um, I went to Brown University. Most of my classes were like this, stuffed into an auditorium, listening to a lecture, and many of those lectures were given by grad students. At Ohio Wesleyan, all your classes are taught by professors who are experts in their field. We don't have any grad students who are teaching. And the professors who teach at small colleges and universities like OWU are here because they love teaching. They love mentoring students. At large universities, Faculty really prioritize their research, getting published, and mentoring grad students. But at a place like Ohio Wesleyan, with a small student body, they are really engaged with students and love mentoring undergraduate students. It's really um, not a lecture style environment at Ohio Wesleyan at all. So think about the quality of education you're getting in a small environment like this versus a large university like that. All right, a couple other things I'll talk about, um, about a liberal arts education that I already mentioned earlier in this presentation, we develop skills through the OWU connection, critical thinking, communication skills, analytical skills, creativity, innovation, problem solving. And these are skills that are going to be useful in just about any career and they're skills that employers want and they lead to jobs. Uh, so the OWU connection is very deliberate in developing these skills in students. All right, myth number two, small universities don't offer research. Uh, as you'll see from this presentation, that is definitely false. Small universities do offer research. Research might be on campus. Research, research might be at other universities, labs in the US, labs around the world, but you will definitely have access to amazing research opportunities. Um, just as many opportunities as at a large university or a medium-sized one because um, we've got teams of people helping you find those research opportunities. So um, this profile here, Tamor, he majored in physics and his OWU connection experiences included our summer science research program. He did research on superconducting cyclotron and nuclear physics. Uh, he also did research on thermal conductivity using molecular dynamics. So um, he spent much of his time at OWU doing research, not only during the summer, but during the academic year as well. And he said that he also still applies those analysis techniques today. And the first research he, experience he had really got him started into doing research. And I think it's just unfolded an amazing path for him. He went on to get his PhD at Duke in physics. He did postdoctoral studies at Ohio State, and he's been working for, I think, the last five years or so at Apple in California, working on camera and depth architecture and self-driving cars. So another myth, Ivy League and top-ranked universities provide the best opportunities. Not necessarily, not always true. Um, another great example I've got here is Ishmael, and we actually 
help students get to Ivy League opportunities for grad school and research. So um, you might not necessarily go to one undergraduate, but they can open doors to going to really top tier universities for graduate school um, and even undergraduate research. So Ishmael, he actually spent the summer at the Harvard and MIT Broad Institute doing research on the prefrontal cortex on immune cells and synapses. He also was an intern at, at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus. Um, he did research with the Cyprus Women's Health Initiative through the University of Oxford. He interned um, at a medical center in Istanbul. And he was also a research assistant at University College of London, focusing on aging and Alzheimer's. So where did Ishmael end up? He's now in medical school at St. George's University in London. So again, uh, these connection experiences led him to an amazing pathway. So another myth, your major determines your career. Not necessarily. Um, I know that admission officers and guidance counselors and lots of people when they talk about U.S. colleges talk about majors and it's maybe not always clear what a major is, what it means to double major, what the difference between a major and a minor is. So I'll try to break it down a little bit. Um, a major is a specialization. It's maybe only about 12 to 16 classes spread out over four years. So there are gonna be other classes that you take that aren't necessarily geared towards your major that aren't related to your major. So you don't just focus on one subject when you come to the US like you might in say the UK or other countries. Um, when you double major, that just means that the courses that you take over four years more of them are geared towards two subjects that you love. And a double major does not have to be related. You could double major in something like physics and music or environmental science and psychology. Uh, and then the difference between a major and a minor is just the number of courses. So a major is gonna be, like I said, 12 to 16 classes over your four years. A minor might be more like six, seven, or eight classes. Um, but my key point here is that you can major in something, but doesn't necessarily mean that you're locked into that as a career path. Um, the next slide, I think, is a really great illustration of how a student came in thinking that geography and economics um, were going to be her majors and lead to her career path. And they, I guess they did lead to her career path, um, but her career path ended up being environmental management. So her connection experiences included an internship in Beijing at the Nature Conservancy. She interned on the China Protected Area Database Research. She also did a travel course on hydropower energy and environmental alteration in Costa Rica. Um, another connection experience included going to Greenland to do research on meteorological variability and doing collecting data for the Greenland Blocking Index. She went on to get her master's in environmental management, and today she is working in London at the Market in Intelligence Team for Cli the Climate Bonds Initiative. So as you can see, geography and economics they were her majors, uh, but she still managed to, you know, put together an amazing array of connection experiences that led her to a different career path. So your major doesn't have to lock you into a particular career path, uh, but whatever you study at OWU will um, lead you towards hopefully a great career path. So another myth, a lot of times students think that an internship is just going to be in the local area where they attend university. So Ohio Wesleyan students think, oh, all the internships must be in Ohio. Not true. Um, we help students find internships all around the world. This student here interned at the United Nations. 
Um, the next slide is a student who had a 10 week internship in Dallas, Texas. She interned at Citigroup in the Division of Global Banking and Consumer Technology. Uh, she also had an internship in New York as a business intelligence analyst. Uh, she ultimately decided that she wanted to go on and get her master's in public affairs from Brown University. And her MPA was in economic development, focusing on inequality. And today she is working at um, an e-commerce company in Karachi, Pakistan. So another myth, students think that your internship is probably just gonna be right before your senior year and you'll probably only have one internship. Not true. You at Ohio Wesleyan might be able to have two internships, perhaps even three internships. Most internships are going to happen during the summer, but it is possible if you are really well organized um, to have an internship during the academic year. If you do that, it would probably be in Columbus or near Delaware, Ohio, uh, but summer internships, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, can happen anywhere, and they don't necessarily happen just before your senior year. So we've got students doing internships um, after just a year, and we have a whole team of advisors not only helping you find the internships, but helping you file your paperwork for your visa to make sure that it um, comes to fruition. But this slide here, Lon, um, he actually had two summer internships at Facebook. Uh, plus, he had an internship in Vietnam as a front-end web developer. Um, but obviously, he was doing internships right from the get-go. So first summer, interning in Vietnam. Second summer, interning at Facebook in California. They asked him to come back the next summer. So he interned at Facebook again. And, you know, oftentimes these internship opportunities do turn into job offers. And that was Lon's case. Um, they offered him a job at Facebook and he has been working at Facebook since 2018. Um, if you don't include the time that he worked as an intern. So um, he got busy doing internships right as soon as he could. And we do help make that a reality. All right, um, I think I touched on this a little bit before about double majoring. If you do want to double major, it is possible. It doesn't take extra time. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to take extra time. It doesn't cost anything extra to be a double major and your subjects don't have to be related. So um, here's a great example of a student who double majored. Her double major, French and politics and government. And she did a lot of connection experiences, internships, travel learning, uh, research. She interned in South Africa at the Borgen Project on Global Poverty. She took a travel learning course, a history course that went to France. Uh, she was very interested in migration issues. So she got a grant to go to Mexico and study migration. She was also fascinated by urban housing around the world. So she got a grant to compare urban housing in the US, Chicago, with urban housing outside the US in Paris. Ultimately, she went on to graduate school in Switzerland at the Graduate Institute of Geneva. And today she's working at the World Economic Forum in Geneva. And she is a specialist on Sub-Saharan African region. So there you can see French and politics and government, you know, they're a little bit related, but they're, um, they didn't not necessarily have to be totally related. So another myth I hear from students is that international students are not going to be able to find jobs in the U.S. The first thing I'm going to say about this, very important, when you go for your visa, um, you don't want to talk about trying to stay in the U.S. to get a job. Um, that's going to be like the number one factor that 
visa officers are looking for. So don't be, you know, upfront about wanting to stay in the U.S. to get a job. But at the same time, is it possible to stay in the U.S. and get a job after you graduate? It is. And I have lots of examples of students who've done so. Um, companies have to sponsor your change of visa. Um, but I do know many international students at Ohio Wesleyan who are working California, Boston, New York City, Texas, Columbus, Ohio. Um, so it is possible to remain in the U.S. and get a job. The other thing I'll say is that it's not just about getting jobs in the U.S. or going back home. We find a lot of our alums around the world go on to work um, in Hong Kong, to work in London, to work in um, the Netherlands. So you might Find yourself getting a job in a country um, that's not the U.S. and that's not where you grew up, uh, but it really opens up doors around the world. So a great example um, is Ibrahim, who double majored in computer science and economics. There's another of, an example of two majors that you might not think could be related um, but yet he managed to find the perfect job that combined his passion for both computer science and economics. His connection experiences uh, included being an economics management fellow. It's kind of like an honors program for students who are interested in majoring in business or um, economics. He had an internship um, as a software developer in Cleveland. He also got another internship as a software developer in Dubai. Ultimately, he decided that the um, economic piece was where he was more interested, and he ended up getting a job at J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, but he got a job utilizing his interest in technology because he was a digital product manager. Uh, as well as a technology analyst. So picking stocks that are related to digital products and technology. He worked his way up to vice president um, and he lives in New York City, even though he came from Pakistan. So a little bit about our career connection as well as the OWU connection and how we help students get these amazing jobs, uh, internships, research. 100% of our students, it's our goal that 100% of our students are impacted by the Career Connection Office. The Career Connection Office helps prepare students at the beginning, the middle, the end of their time at OWU, now essentially, for the career goals of their future. And we have so many services from coaching, um, programs like Bishop Launch, career fairs. We have a program called Real Life 101. So it's not just about getting your job, but it's about becoming an adult and negotiating salaries and finding an apartment and signing a lease. We have alumni partnerships, grants for um, career exploration. We offer mock interviews, lots of assistance with job search. We also offer assistance for graduate school applications, salary negotiation, personal branding, career exploration, assessments, and career communities, which I'll talk about in a minute. But just to give you a sense of our student success, in 2022, 96% of our students reported being employed, attending graduate school, interning, volunteering, or taking a gap year. So 96%, and that's broken up by 76% 76, 76 found jobs in their field, 16% went directly to grad school, and 4% decided to um, do an internship, volunteer, or take a gap year. The other thing I want to point out about this 96% of students, 97% of our seniors completed that survey. So it's a really accurate picture of what our seniors um, from the class of 2022 are doing. And many of our graduates are working in accounting, business, financing, and marketing. 
environment, health science, research and technology, 26%, education, 18%, sports, entertainment, arts, media, 14%, and 4% are working for um, government and nonprofit organizations. And then of these 16% who went to grad school immediately after OWU, 16% um, oh gosh, are pursuing PhDs, 64% of them are pursuing masters, um, 12% are pursuing nursing and health, um, and some of the graduate programs that class of 2022 students enrolled at included Johns Hopkins, Princeton, George Washington, um, Case Western, there's one in London, Brunel University in London, and a number of others as well. So remember I mentioned career communities. Uh, one thing that we do at OWU is we have these career communities spread all around campus. So if you have the desire to go speak with somebody, you can find somebody in the library, in student services, in your residence hall, in the science center, and you can speak with people who are not only um, specialists in career advice, but they're also people who hold industry experience. And these are different communities that you can go and talk with about social impact careers, careers related to economics and business, education, uh, humanities and arts, and lots more. So uh, that's it for my examples on internships and research at Ohio Wesleyan. These are some of the places where our students are working and enrolled in grad school. Um, OWU ranks among the top 100 best liberal arts colleges, one of the best and most interesting four-year colleges in all of US, Canada, Great Britain, and Ireland, top for social mobility, um, and a best value school. And just want to reiterate that regardless of the industry, uh, we need people who can solve problems, write well, speak well, and bring multiple perspectives to decision-making. We need people who are good managers and cross-culturally competent. And all of that is the liberal arts. Um, so this is really about our education and what we strive to do. Uh, so that's it. Any questions? I'm happy to uh, take questions now. Let's see, I've got a couple in the chat box. Stop sharing this now. Okay, um, so I think I've already answered that. At what level should a student be to start an internship? So the only stipulation about doing an internship is that you have to have been in the US for a year. So that is a stipulation of the visa. But once you've been in the US 12 months, then you can start looking for internship experiences at OWU. You might find them through professors, you might find them through the career services office, through the OWU connection office, other students. Um, so it's pretty soon into your OWU career that you can start looking uh, for internship experiences. All right. Um, is there an age limit for admission? Yeah, so there might be some folks in this audience, folks who are watching this um, presentation, wondering how they can apply to OWU. I will say that we don't have an age limit for admission, but we are a residential college university, which means that just about all of the students do live on campus. So if you're older than the typical college student, which is usually 17 to 22, um, or if you're younger than that, um, just know that you're going to be living primarily with 17 to 22 year olds, and we don't have too many exceptions for students to live off campus. Most of our students live on campus all four years. So while there is no age limit for admission, you wanna ask yourself, do you wanna be at a place where you're gonna be living with um, 17 to 22 year olds? 
Um, in terms of financial aid, we do have awards available for international students. Uh, we offer a $30,000 per year Bashford Award. And the Bashford Award is something that is not based on GPA, not based on test scores, um, not based on financial need or background, but we do expect that a family is able to contribute about 25,000 per year for personal, for living, for housing meals, books, insurance, a little bit of the tuition. We don't have full tuition scholarship, sorry, we don't have full scholarships for international students. Beyond the 30,000 Bashford Award, we do sometimes consider students for additional grants, maybe need-based aid, um, but we don't have full scholarships. But the good news is that every international student who applies will be considered for that $30,000 Bashford Award, regardless of GPA, test score, and financial background. Um, 